Just Wanda Davis lives in the Upper Ninth Ward. With no access to a vehicle, she relies on public transportation at least four times a week. It works out, but it's a long wait on buses, and there's not enough. Davis says she sometimes waits 45 minutes to an hour for a bus to come. Where you can catch one bus, you're catching two or three different lines just to get where you need to go. And that is a lot of time. That's despite RTA adding nearly $10 million of services last September. In April of 2016, we added almost $5 million of service, which decreased wait times, added the Airport Express. It um, did things like added weekend service in New Orleans East. There are more service changes coming with the opening of the North Rampart streetcar line. The four options being considered are expected to decrease wait times and add more bus lines, including bringing back the Martin Luther King and Ferret Street bus routes to Canal Street. This streetcar line will give direct access via streetcar from neighborhoods to Canal Street. And the good news about these proposed changes is that we are continuing bus lines um, to Canal Street that come out of the Lower Ninth Ward. Davis is still skeptical the changes will help with the long waits. If I have to ride one bus and then get off to catch a streetcar, you're not helping me at all because my time I'm consuming to get where I need to go. The daily RTA ridership reaches up to 60,000 riders a day. Officials expect the service changes will increase the number of people using public transit to access jobs in other downtown destinations. It's really all good news for the riding community. Now, a summary of the proposed uh, route changes can be viewed on the RTA website as well as at their main office. And all public comments must be submitted by July 25th. That's this coming Monday. We posted some links on our website to, the, to do that. And you can also expect the Board of Commissions to make a final uh, decision on this proposal in the coming weeks. Reporting uh, on Rampart Street, I'm Casey Ferran. Back to you. All right, thanks, Casey. Well, you may notice an increase in foot traffic tomorrow morning. 25,000 young adults and faith leaders will walk to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome for the closing of the LCMS National Youth Gathering. The crowd will be walking from their hotels along Poitras Street, 7.30 and 8.30 tomorrow morning. So drivers, you should expect some delays. Well, coming up after the break, why crossing the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway could soon get more costly. And later in sports, is Drew Brees still elite at 37 years old? Of course he is. <laughs> Fletcher delves into that issue in sports. And it's a beautiful night tonight. I'll let you know when rain and storms are going to pop again. Live, local, late breaking. This is WDSU News at 10. With Scott Walker, Adriana Hopkins, Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr, and sports with Fletcher Mackle. Increasing safety on the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway will mean increasing tolls. Tomorrow, a $100 million construction proposal will be submitted to the Greater New Orleans Expressway Commission, and that project would triple the bridge's emergency safety shoulders to a total of six and will raise concrete barriers to prevent overturns. That construction would be funded by a toll increase, a dollar for tag users and two dollars for drivers paying in cash. Two things we wanted to do was enhance safety of the bridge and minimize the cost to our, commu our commuters. And I, I am absolutely positive that we've done that. Well, the tolls would still be collected for southbound traffic only. That proposed increase will be considered at the commission's August meeting. A morning commute reminder now. Tomorrow, ramp meters along the Pontchartrain Expressway will be activated. The meters went online during tonight's rush hour commute, and they're expected to decrease congestion and improve travel times along the U.S. 90 corridor. The body of a freight vessel captain who fell into the Mississippi River has been recovered. The Coast Guard says Captain Ambarish Parikh of Laplace, Louisiana, was last seen Sunday. The 69-year-old was attempting to board the freight vessel, an uh, African Raptor from a crew boat, and fell off a ramp that was connecting the two vessels vessels near Donaldsonville. His body was recovered today by a good Samaritan. A family from Livingston Parish was killed in a car crash in Alabama on Monday. Police say the victims were three women and two children ages four and seven. 
All were from Albany, Louisiana. The family was traveling in a car when it collided with a semi trailer. Police have released surveillance video of an armed robbery at New Orleans East Pizza Hut. The video from early Saturday morning shows a man enter through the back door of the restaurant on Crowder Boulevard. Police say he got in there as an employee was taking out the trash. The suspect was wearing an American flag bandana over his face and sunglasses. This is the third armed robbery of New Orleans restaurant in the past week. Police do not think they're related, but they're asking anyone with information on any of the incidents to give them a call. Bailiffs at the Terrebonne Parish Courthouse are getting a show of support from a local law firm. Today, St. Martin and Bork of Homa announced a donation of bulletproof vests for all bailiffs. That donation comes just days after two bailiffs were killed by a gunman in Michigan. And Hano is expanding fair housing opportunities in New Orleans. Tonight, a crowd gathered for a public hearing on the 2016 assessment a fair housing plan. That room consisted of residents and housing advocates. We're here tonight to discuss with residents what do they see as the barriers to opportunity for them and how they can become more involved in letting us know what their concerns and hopes uh, are for how we can make better investments in expanding access for everyone. Officials say Hano's 2016 fair housing plan will ensure the elimination of housing discrimination and segregation. Orleans Parish School Board President Seth Bloom will not seek re-election. That announcement was made at tonight's board meeting. Bloom says he plans to explore new ways to serve the community with a, quote, particular eye towards criminal justice reform. All right, let's talk weather now. Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr is here. And have you been outside and seen that amazing full wolf moon or whatever? Thunder, 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 thunder. Thunder. Is there a wolf moon? There is okay, a but wolf it's moon, but it's not now. Thunder. And I mean, you can guess why, right? Because it's comes in with a thunderous approach. Well, no, because we have thunderstorms this time of the year. <laughs> All right, let's look at the full thunder moon. It rose at 748, but you couldn't see it right away because we had a little bit of a pollution deck thanks to that upper level high. But isn't this gorgeous Nola Spice design sent that one in? I kind of zoomed in on it. And then Jay Weiss, and in this twit pic, you can see it just over the horizon. There's the city. Looks so pretty. And then I heard from Wesley Robinson. There you can see the city and the moon rising. So pretty. Go out and check it out tonight. In fact, what I did was a Facebook Live at Margaret Orr WDSU. You can go back and look at it. We talked about all the different names of all the different moons. Got into the tropics too, so you can check that out. Here's a look at what happened today. We did have some rain and storms early this morning, and then they kind of diminished as they moved to the west southwest for the most part. We can look Look at what's happening now, and I mean, there's not a raindrop out there. It's a great night to see the full moon. As you look to the north, you will see a little bit of cloudiness. That's where we had some rain earlier. This can set up a boundary as it moves to the southwest and may help with our rain chances as we go into tomorrow. We have a high pressure to the north, and you can see a whole lot of orange, right? Those are the heat advisories that are posted, and it's possible that we could have a heat advisory posted for us later in the week. Week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll have to watch that. You will notice a cold front to our northeast. It's not going to move through and cool us down. Looks like we've got plenty hot weather for the next few days. So there is the upper level high. And remember with high pressure, you've got a clockwise flow. So as you look at this, you can see sure enough, there are these little areas of disturbed weather that are kind of moving around the periphery of this area of high pressure along the edge of it, basically. And so it's possible that we could.